Happy 2024, folks. We just about made it through yet another year, and now it's back to that Sigma grind set all over again. Of course, the Christmas period has sadly ended, but that doesn't mean that the gifts have to stop. And when I say gifts, you know I mean for yourself. There's a few days left of the winter sales, so if you're looking to pick up some new strategy games, there's no better time than right now. So I've put together a list of my personal top picks for games and DLC in the strategy sphere, both for the big games and some smaller ones you may not have heard of. I'm going to be using Steam for this since it's the most popular and, let's be honest, best option, but Epic does have sales of their own and they will give you an additional 33% off any purchase of like £12. So if you want to make use of that and don't mind swapping launches, go right ahead. Now, let's waste no more time and dive right in with some options you will absolutely expect. Look, Total War Warhammer has problems that I could talk about for hours at a time, but the bottom line is, no game lets you play such large-scale wars both on the campaign map and on the battlefield like only this series does. With Baseline Warhammer 3, you have the Prologue, which is great for getting you into the series if you're new, the Chaos Rifts that are fun to play exactly once, and then Immortal Empires for some pure sandbox tomfoolery. If I were you, I'd base my purchase on this. If you want to play the Empire, then picking up Warhammer 3 and 1 might be the best bet for you. Or if you want to play as Ikit Claw, then you need to get 3, 2, and then the Prophet and the Warlock, and that is just the ticket. Look, all content before the Ogre Kingdoms is pretty high quality, so as long as you stay in that time period, you probably won't miss. Just do some research into what each faction is like to play as, and base your purchasing decisions on that. You don't need to get everything. It's almost like I have a video for just that, which you should maybe watch. How about that? All of it together is a lot of content and added up, it's still pretty expensive, but 50% off it all can certainly ease some of that pain. The game isn't perfect, but you're getting the best of it at a lower price than pretty much any other time of year. We also have Stellaris, another channel staple and another game that is pretty outrageous with its DLC. That being said, about 75% of the DLC is pretty unnecessary for most players. If I were you, I'd go with Utopia, Federations and Megacorp, as well as obviously the base game to get you started. Everything else you can pick and choose if the content looks interesting to you once you know what's going on. Again, I do have a video putting each DLC into a tier list and briefly explaining what they are, so check that out to know what's what. It's another game that's still expensive if you want to grab everything, but it's not needed to do so. And with just the base game and a couple of additions, you have easily hundreds of hours of game to play. Next we have Anno 1800. This is one of my personal favorite games I've ever covered on this channel, albeit more rarely than many others. If you ask me, the Year 5 Gold Edition, which includes all the DLC that affects gameplay, for £42 is Daylight Robbery, because that's easily hundreds if not thousands of hours of gameplay right there. The base game is of course still a great pickup with no shortage of content to sink your teeth into. A single game of base game Anno can last well over 100 hours with no DLC at all, so you'll be swimming in content no matter what you choose. If you want to pick and choose DLCs, I also have another video ranking each one, so be sure to check that out if you want more context. I promise that this video isn't just an excuse to promote a bunch of other videos I've already made, it's just kind of turned out that way. I really love Anno so very, very, very much, and I cannot recommend this one enough if you're into city building and production chain management. It scratches that Factorio and City Skylines itch at the same time, and it's just a treat to play. I have to force myself to not play it because if I do, then time will cease to exist and I'll probably not make an upload for a few months. Speaking of city builders and my favourite games, here we have one of the truly best games I've ever played, which is of course Frostpunk. If you haven't played it and like city builders, amazing soundtracks and dynamic storytelling, you absolutely have to. This game will have you building cities through a series of challenging scenarios where you have to manage your people by keeping them fed and warm whilst also making sure they don't lose hope or become rebellious as the conditions only get worse. The stories you can find here by reading each scouting location are some of the most harrowing you can find in games and again, the soundtrack is out of this world good. £5 for this base game is a steal and just over £10 for all the DLC as well has to be a mistake. It might not be the longest game you ever play, with you being able to complete each scenario in one sitting if you're motivated, but at the end of those things, you'll feel like weeks have passed from the stress and tension this game builds. I love it, please play it, it's outstanding, and I can't wait for the sequel later on this year. Coming back to Paradox now with Age of Wonders 4. This one here is a recent entry with a much shorter DLC list. That said, the discount here is 30% for the base game, which will give you plenty to do in game with a range of realms, stories to play through, and more faction variety than you can shake a stick at. Honestly, the gameplay here is never the same twice. Warhammer 3, despite its many factions, often ends up feeling the same as you get your snowball rolling. Here, however, no two games feel the same and you need to stay on your toes at all times to stay alive. The Faction Maker gives you nearly endless creativity to make just the right faction for you, and each game you complete nets you small rewards for future games. It's a really solid base game and the DLC so far has been pretty great, if a little bit overpriced, if you ask me. Still, base game has plenty to keep you busy, so sticking with that for now and grabbing DLC later when it hits a steeper sale is absolutely a great option. If you're into the fancy element of Warhammer 3 but the Total War gameplay doesn't click for you, this is a great alternative. Now for something a little bit different, The Rift Breaker. Believe it or not, I did actually cover this game when it came out and I really enjoyed it. 
This is quite a soft core strategy game that sees you set up bases on alien worlds to collect various resources and eventually build yourself a portal home. It is quite linear but offers a ton of fun with a wide variety of weapons and turrets you can use to keep the fun at bay. The combat here is loud, punchy, being a great marriage between Bullet Hell and Factorio. This is another one I picked up and played until I finished it, so I really cannot recommend it enough. If you like building bases and mowing down hordes of aliens with a variety of explosive weapons, then this is absolutely worth a look. Now into games I haven't really covered as much, and we're starting with a banger, Marvel's Midnight Suns. If you ask me, this is one of the most underrated games to come out in the last couple of years. It's kind of like XCOM meets a card game, meets a friendship simulator, and if that sounds like it can't possibly work, worry not. That's exactly how I felt before I sank over 70 hours into this game. The combat gameplay is like a puzzle with various solutions and finding the right one is endlessly satisfying. Combine that with the relationship building with your allies back at base, which actually improves their stats and you have yourself one incredibly unique fun video game. It's not one of those where you get stuck in a loop of finishing a mission, then hanging out with your pals. Oh, but now I slept, so I should probably do a mission. And since I did a mission, I should hang out and oh dear, it's 5am. Is it a bit cringe? Yeah, do I care? Not at all. It is so, so, so much fun and I cannot recommend trying this one out enough. Even if the card game part puts you off like it did for me, grab it, try it for an hour and see how you feel. Steam has that refund policy for a reason. I can almost guarantee that you'll be keeping it, if not refunding it, to get the Legendary Edition, which is what I did, which is also discounted. It's pretty good. The DLC isn't amazing, but you get the characters, which are fun, so I'll take it. Next up, we have Civilization VI. Do I really need to talk about Civ? It's consistently one of the most played games on Steam, always in the top 25, and it's nearly eight years old at this point. Personally, I'm a bit more of a Civilization 5 head myself, but this is unquestionably the definitive Civilization experience, where you can play as a range of legendary leaders from history and battle for dominance, whether that's through pure conquest, science, or culture. You really do have the freedom to play however you want, with whoever you want, and pretty much every option is viable. I want to cover this game for years, but it's so massive that I don't even really know where to start. Hopefully, I'm gonna get that done at some point, uh, well, this year. If you've never played a Civ game before, this is unquestionably the place to start, and for a price like that, you really can't go wrong. Now let's close out with a couple of smaller games that also run excellently on the Steam Deck and presumably the other handhelds, of which there are many these days. First up, we have Against the Storm. This has quite literally taken Steam by storm with over 17,000 reviews and 95% of them being positive. It really is like nothing else I've ever played, blending city building and roguelike gameplay into something that is truly special. Instead of focusing on a single city that eventually gets out of control and hard to manage and you forget about it and leave you safe and come back six months later with no idea what's going on, you instead build a never ending set of smaller settlements to a meta progression and make each new run just a little bit easier. Each new claim you stake will have its own set of events and challenges to overcome, making each city feel truly different. This really is something special and I implore you to give it a go is like nothing else that you've ever played. Now if you thought that 17,000 reviews are impressive then how about 124,000 with 97% positive? Slay the Spire is one of the definitive Steam Deck games if you ask me since you can just play it endlessly and rarely see the exact same thing twice. It's roguelike deck builder which means you progress through the game finding and buying new cards to use in that run whilst trying to survive to the end. It is a touch look based but when those cards come up and they perfectly synergize, oh baby does it feel good. There's plenty of progression to be had with new characters and cards making each progressive run just a little bit more likely to go your way and yet, it's still strategy based. Just because luck determines the cards that you receive doesn't mean it plays them for you. Each encounter is a careful chess match to take enemies out as fast as you can, whilst maintaining as much HP as possible to keep moving forward. Every choice about what to use, where to fight, and how to spend rest spots matters. It is a great game that everyone should try. Yeah, the luck can be frustrating, and if you go into the negative reviews on Steam, it's people pretty much coping that they just have bad luck, and uh, possibly a bit of a skill issue if you ask me. But the elation you feel when it comes up in your favour is like nothing else. Definitely give this one a go, especially if you have a Steam Deck, it is so worth it. Next we have Domekeeper, another excellent Steam Deck game here, and this is probably one of my personal favourites. Each game you're placed into a procedurally generated map, and unlike Starfield, these are ripe with things to do. You have to dig for resources and relics to bring them back to the dome to harvest, and then also defend from waves of increasingly deadly enemies. Every resource you bring back can be used to upgrade your base as well as yourself, giving you the choice between being better at mining or fighting, giving you this awful choice you always feel like you're making wrong, but in a good way. It's great fun and rushing back and forth with a bunch of resources stuffed under your arms as enemies close in makes for some very tense moments of gameplay. Relics you find offer you the choice between all different kinds of unique upgrades like resource elevators or missile defense systems. Every run feels different and there's enough progression to keep you coming back for hours. Now sure, a single run can be completed in a couple of hours. And this is another great game for the sound design appreciators out there, digging into resources and hearing the Plinky plonky sounds and then fall into the tunnel floor is glorious. This will never leave my Steam Deck and is the perfect game to just whip out whenever you have a spare few minutes 
since you can just pick up and play a cycle or two in no time flat. And closing that with something that I don't actually have on the Steam Deck, I actually have it on the Switch, but it's the same game and it kicks ass on either, and that is of course Into the Breach. This is a turn-based grid game where you control a team of mech pilots as they're beamed back in time to try and stop an alien threat. Every run is randomly generated with different enemies, maps, and objectives every single time. This is another one of those games where you'll likely fail a lot more than you succeed, but each run will net you a little bit more progression unlocking new mechs and teams, making each subsequent run just a little bit easier, and more importantly, varied. It's just a solid strategy game that requires you to be switched on the whole time, and it's perfect for picking up and playing a quick run in half an hour or so. Plus, look how cute that art style is. I love it. It's a great game. That about wraps things up. Comment below any great pickups that you found. Of course, there's a couple of days left. So um, if you're watching this beyond a couple of days after this one out, uh, bad luck. Like, subscribe, and if you want even more strategy games, then why not check out this video here where I go over how some of the best strategy games perform on deck, and also Warmer 3.